What I have here is an original 1911 45. Now this one is a Remington Rand, but I love it. You know, United States property. This is an iconic pistol for a lot of people. This is, you know, one of the most iconic pistols ever. Um, you know, I mean, it, it has a long history, but for a lot of people, you know, getting one of these in original is just way out of the budget. But what I have seen, and if you follow me, you know, I love the best bang for buck. I have been seeing this. This is the thesis. This is their 1911 A1. Now this one is the service. They have one that is identical to the original military, but the reason this caught my attention is the price that I kept seeing it on sale for, I think for a lot of people, would be of interest. A, for a 45 ACP, it's about as low as they come, period, regardless of style. Um, other than high point, and I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm not going to throw that one in the mix, but I've seen one or two others that have actually come in less. But because it's the 1911, I just, I, I've been dying to try one. You know, special thanks to Battlehawk Armory for sending me this to review. But I'm going to do a side by side comparison with the original. And from everything I can tell thus far, they are identical. I'm even going to try to switch the slides out and stuff and see how that works. But I am really curious how well is this going to perform? You know, how well is it going to shoot? How does it compare to the original? What kind of accuracy can we get out of it? Reliability. And I'm standing out here. If you follow my channel, you know that, you know, I'm a little bit uh, off in the head sometimes because I like to take a pistol and I like to push it. I don't know if we're going to be able to go 200 yards with this. We got 100 yards over here. We got 50 here. Let's just, uh, let's just check out the thesis. Not sure why we're doing that. Out, I'm getting something is either rubbing or kind of coming back. I noticed. That was better. Getting some more of these jams. Our failure. Hey guys, I'm Drew Case. Welcome back to Beyond Seclusion, where I only give you honest product reviews, no podium, no pulpit, and no politics. What I want to do now is uh, quick go to specs and tech. I'm not going to read all this stuff. You can read that, and then we're going to save the rest of the review for shoot and check out the specs. Okay, with something like this, we just got to do an out of the box. Those that, you know, hate it and are ADD, you can skip to whatever number I've got down there below. Okay, so if you didn't catch it, this thing is heavy, just like the original. One thing is you run out of ammo, you can club with it because this thing is a beast. But that's also why I think the recoil and... A lot of people really enjoy shooting this is because of its weight so anyway what i want to do now is there's nothing to zero let's just see what we can do with this um at 50 up close and let's just have some fun and put it to the test okay so we are out of the box we did the specs and tech let's start having some fun what i like to do is take it straight out of the box and see if we can hit steel down there at 50 if we can just do that straight out of the box for me that always says a lot here we've got some aac we got a bunch of full metal jacket we're going to try and then once we get maybe broke in a little bit um and see where it's shooting then i want to try some of the the xtp we get great results or i have had great results with that and see what we can get for groups i always like to see what i can get for groups at 50 if we can anyway let's uh let's see what we can do at 50 straight out of the box people for self-defense prefer the 45, you know, they call it a, a man stopper. Um, 
it is a huge cartridge. It's a huge bullet. You know, 230 grains, um, that's huge. It's, I always think of it as like throwing a bowling ball at somebody versus, you know, poking them with a screwdriver like a 9 mil, you know, or the 5, 5.7 by 28, you know. It may be going slow, but nobody wants to have somebody toss a bowling ball at them. Okay, folks, here we go. Let's see what we can do at 50 straight out of the box. Seems to be aiming a bit on the low side. I'm aiming kind of at the head here. A little out of practice with the 45. Let's do a couple yeah, let's more. Let's try again. Maybe we'll see. Maybe I'm just rusty. Okay, there we do have a failure to feed kind of hung up. All right. And, and I'm not sure is that a failure to feed? Yep, that was a failure to feed. All right, what I want to do now is, okay, we had two failure feeds there. I want to take this apart. Um, I noticed when I was showing the assembly, disassembly, that, you know, things weren't oiled really well. I'm going to clean the barrel. I, a lot of times on pistols, I will season the barrels. I'm not going to do it on the 45, you know, obviously one shot clean, three shots clean, because I just don't get accuracy out of the 45 to make it worth it. But let's do that, and then... Um, and then I actually I want to sit on the bench and see see what we get for groups, whether it's shooting really high or really low. Okay, so I got it cleaned, and you know, th when you take it down a few times, it really does get pretty easy. Now, one thing here I wanted to point out is I put a little bit of sight paint on there. My vision is not what it used to be, so iron sights are usually blurry for me, and without you know a bright a bright fluorescent orange or something to grab my my vision. Um, we're going to see what we can get here at 50 yards, and I forgot to point out before the specs and tech, these are made in Turkey. Now, for anybody that's like, eh, you know, that guys, that's not the same as made in China. Okay, Turkey actually makes a lot of really quality firearms, and more and more every day. Anyway, enough talking, let's see what we can do here. Now that flick back is because I'm benching it and I'm not, it's not the same as holding it out in front. And when we're shooting for accuracy, we take a little bit lighter grip and so it does appear to have more recoil or, you know, some of you complain about limp wristing, but it is trying to get uh, the most accurate shots we can. There was, on, that was on the black. Show you what I'm seeing for a sight picture here. Okay, so that's what we're seeing. Let's take a look at those groups. Okay, that was, I think, the first shot out of the clean barrel and then they kind of came down eh, you know <laughs> that's a 12 inch target the 45 is you know not my preferred caliber for accuracy I, I usually can do way better with a nine but you know this really doesn't surprise me especially with sort of the breaking phase let's take it back to the cqb range get a whole bunch of lead down through that barrel and then maybe come back and let's see what we can do with the xtp now, hey guys, if you are not familiar with my crazy, stupid deals, that's what got me to want to test this. It was because I kept sending this out in my email blast and on my X page. You're going to want to check those out because it was coming in at a crazy, stupid price. 
you go to my webpage, you sign up, it's an email blast, you can unsubscribe at any time, it costs you absolutely nothing, it's free, people love it, and they hate it because it ends up emptying out their wallet, uh, there's probably wives all over that don't know me personally, and they hate me anyway, I've got the same thing on my X page, um, I found a lot of people aren't into X, so, you know, you've got two options, the email or the X page, anyway, back to the review. So we're back here at the CQB range. This is going to be a more applicable distance for a 45. Let's just see what we can do. I noticed the second spring or the second mag was a little tight loading. I wonder if maybe on that first one where we had a couple of those failure to feeds. Um, let's just find out. I think I might start over here at the, at the 25 and see what we can do at 25. Okay, well, hey, you know, that's pretty good. 25 yards of iron sights for most people. That is going to be the farthest they would shoot anyway. <laughs> Ooh, a okay, let's twist. see how we can transition at uh, maybe 10, 15 yards to about 20 yards back there. She only got eight shots. All right, guys, I'm out of practice with a 45. It's I've been pretty much just uh, nine mils. That was better. Okay, we did fail to go in there. Not sure why that's doing that. We're doing it again. Okay, real quick, something I wanted to point out. I'm getting something is either rubbing or kind of coming back. I noticed when I'm choked up on this, oh, darn son, you can kind of see that the hammer, and I don't know why I don't have that big of hands. Um, I'm just used to trying to choke up as much as possible and I'm coming up beyond that beaver tail and I think the hammer is coming down and biting me and that very well could just be as some people would say a personal problem and maybe the way I'm holding it anyway let's uh let's give you a different view here at the distance I'm not sure why we're doing that I know everybody that watches this is an expert, you know. I don't think I'm limp wristing it. Let's, uh... Okay, this will be the last bit, and then we're at 100 rounds. Getting some more of these jams. Our failure to feeds, I don't know why they're doing that. Having way too many failure to feeds in my opinion so what i want to do is i want to try a different brand of ammo um you know everything is oiled i did the magazines you know i have seen that with magazines so you know i kind of oiled them up lubed them up um got you know so here's the the gecko in this one and then we're going to try the the xtp the hollow points you know i've had great accuracy with these anyway i'm going to Go fix the target here, and let's see what we get for groups and see if we continue to have those failure to feeds.
pretty decent group. Um, let's take a look. You know, so that's actually not a bad group. Got two up here, two flyers, but the rest, well, I would not say palm size, but hand size. All considering, that's not too bad. Um, let's cover those up and let's try the XTP. We are definitely getting a consistent pattern of shooting to the left. So we may try to tap that dovetail just a little bit to the right. Okay, so what I did was I took just a little dowel and I just tapped this a little bit to the right. And I just shot another group here with the XTP. We didn't have any failure to feeds. Let's take a look. Hey, 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 hey. That's pretty good. Um, now my math isn't always the best, but I think I got more than eight shots there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so somewhere one of my little black stickies popped off. But regardless, that is still way better And that. That's actually pretty awesome. Um, I'm happy with that. I think we're good enough. Now I want to go back to the steel and see what we can do at 50 and 100. Okay, so we've got the gecko. Let's see what we can do here with the gecko at 50 now with the adjustment on that. Okay, it failed to go into full battery there. I'm Guys, I don't think I'm limp wristing it, and I don't know why. And we, and then it goes into battery. Our accuracy certainly got better. Now I have noticed I'm getting it's kind of sore here, a little tender. The beaver tail on this does seem to be a little bit different than my government issue you know my actual one from world war ii era okay so here's my government issue and it, i just it feels different it it looks similar but it's not okay versus here you see how it's it is digging down into my hand more you do want to choke up on the gun as high as you can but as you can see there it's digging in And here, it's not. Now, it uh, it may not look that obvious, but it's enough. I've shot this enough, and I've never had this happen before. Okay, about four days later, I just wanted to show you the end result of that. Now, everybody's got an opinion, and everybody's an expert on YouTube. But, you know, I've shot a lot of pistols, and I haven't had something like this happen before. I've shot my 1911. I, you know, I do think that there's just an ever so slight difference in the angle on that beaver tail and just the way I shoot and the size of my hand, um, you know, this was a result. I really am not sure how I could hold it different. Not too long ago, I did a review for Shell Shock on the EarPro iPro. It's a new company, and I have left these on, I don't know how long, and the battery still hasn't died. I'm really loving them. Both are exceptionally comfortable. Uh, if you're looking for some good EarPro iPro, check out that review. Also, I have a 10% discount code on there that you might be interested in. They are really hard to beat for the price and what you get. Let's, uh, let's fire off some rounds here. Make sure compare wise and see if we have any failure defeats with this now my government one i don't have the sight paint on there and i cannot see that front sight post okay well i didn't hit much but we still didn't have a failure to feed No failure feeds. Here's a thought. Let's try this mag in that gun. I'd kind of notice this. If you look in there, that cartridge is sort of angled down. It shouldn't be.
We didn't have one there. Nope. Hey guys, the wind picked up. I had to come inside. Anyway, um, we are having an unacceptable amount of failure to feeds, in my opinion. Um, we are, I would think, past a reasonable break-in. I am, uh, I think I've gone about 250 rounds so far. Now, I know some guns, I can't remember which one, you know, needs like 500 rounds. Um, yeah, that ain't going to happen on this one. But anyway, I reached out to the company both email and phone call last week at the end of the week and then also Today, I'm going to give them another couple of days and see if they respond and see if they have any thoughts. And I guess we'll find out what kind of customer service they have. And I'll let you know what happens with that. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful and maybe answered some potential questions. Um, until next time, happy shooting. Remember, educate our young people to shooting and gun safety. And every time that we're on the range, everybody's watching us. So like it or not, you're an ambassador for the Second Amendment. So do us all a huge favor. Be a good ambassador. Be a safe and responsible gun owner. So nice case, guys. Uh, you know, really nice. We've got, uh, if you can't see up here, a uh, couple brushes cleaning, uh, none of which I use. But hey, this is awesome. Got a nice little gun lock um, uh, tool of some sort. I haven't read the instructions or anything. Nice. And we've got two mags. Uh, gun companies. Anybody watching this, don't ever send a gun with only one mag. That's just cheap. Anyway. All right. Let's take this out. All right, now, if you are not familiar with the 1911, thus far, I compared this to my original 1911. Yes, I love this thing. Need to give her a good clean. But anyway, this is an iconic pistol, guys. I think, in my opinion, the most iconic ever. But that's just my opinion. Anyway, I compared it side by side. And, and we'll do a little closer detail here. I'll do some pictures and you can see. As far as I can tell, it's identical. Identical. So those that love shooting the 1911, you're going to love this. Now, again, those that aren't familiar, this is, I believe, and forgive me, I, I'm no expert here. This is the beaver tail. This is a, a feature that we have seen replicated, especially like on the Springfield XDMs. Okay, the trigger will not pull unless this is depressed. So it's a safety mechanism i love that feature the other thing is is this keeps your hand below okay those of you that maybe are a little bit on the new side this slide comes flying back and some people they don't pay attention and they grab the gun like this and they only ever do that one time the whole idea is is, is a it keeps your hand from going up and be a reminder now oh my gosh that's tight okay the mag release, if you got, unless you have massive Shrek hands, it's going to be, and this one's tight too, it's new. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to do like really fast mag dumps, um, drops with that. And again, sorry, Lefty's not ambidextrous. Now, this is, um, it's not double action, but I, I like having a hammer. I, I just do. You know, the striker fire, we just don't have a lot of hammer guns these days. But I love having the hammer because I can have it chambered. And then, but, you know, some are going to argue. Now, again, this is an old firearm. So our rear dovetail sight and the front, the front is actually part of the frame, which I like. You know, this is a KISS gun. Uh, so you're not going to really have a whole lot of this hand tap okay for windage a little bit left right but it should hopefully be spot on i mean this is just i mean this is an old design guys uh let's the trigger pull here it's a nice trigger pull the breakdown on this a lot of folks don't like it is it's not super quick and easy compared to more modern firearm designs and the mag okay 
they are slim and oh this is an eight rounder okay so you know some folks that's another thing you know they want the double stack but hey this is a 1911 Okay, another thing that differs real quick is the serrations. You know, they're back here. A lot, almost everything today has serrations up here as well. And they're, they're kind of small. They're not super aggressive. And, of course, we have no rail. Okay, for assembly, disassembly, I actually forgot how much I dislike uh, assembling and disassembling the 1911. But, hey, that's just me. I can already hear the comments. But me, personally, I just I like a lot simpler. But... First thing is make sure the mag is out, okay? This is the button, and I'm not going to have all the, the names correctly, but it's going to be under a lot, of atten a lot of attention, and it can shoot out. Now, this comes with a tool, and I actually am, I think, almost more likely to launch it using this, but you, you would push this down and then rotate, but I think I'm actually more comfortable with doing my thumb now that is where this comes flying out so you got to be careful and we take the spring out okay and then this will rotate over and come out and then we can just slide back and we want to line it up and if we get it lined up just right like that then there we go and that comes right out okay we take that and then we come off. Whoops, I forgot to pull this out. This goes in right here on the inside. And then to take the barrel out, this slides drops down. And we are disassembled. And we can clean our barrel. Okay, put it back in. This goes in here. Okay, this will be in the down position. And then we just go reverse. Get that back. Okay, so from here, we get it where we want it, and then this comes forward, and it's going to rest in there. And I think there may be different ways of doing this. And, uh, I, again, I do not make any claims of being. And then we get this back, and we can... We can see there that that little hole there is lined up. We get this in. And we don't want to drag it across. And then get to right at that point. And we should be able to, there we go, pop it in. And then it will come all the way forward. And this is critical here. This needs to go in first before the spring. And you can also put the spring in before. I've seen it done that way. I really don't care to do it that way. You just need to sometimes make it so that it hits that guide rod. Okay. And then this is going to go in. And this is where you got to be careful with the pressure. And then this spins around. just like that. And the tool sometimes can be helpful to depress that. And then we'll just do a function check. There we go. It's not impossible. It's not the fastest. And I'll be honest, it is not my preferred. This is one of my least favorite takedowns, but that wasn't too bad. Little practice, guys, and you'll be good to go. Okay, so side by side, I mean, these are, as far as I can tell, they're identical. Um, this does have the little lanyard ring. And this does not. Let's, uh, let's just see if the slides are compatible.